Aloha, everybody. Welcome to the Hawaii Verse Podcast, a podcast that supports local by almost crashing your car while taking your eyes off the road, looking at the waves every time you drive by a surf spot. I'm your host, Kamaka Diaz, and our guest and his wife definitely knows about risking their lives to check out the waves. I am so stoked to talk stories with our guest today. But before we get into all of that, I got to tell you about this week's local business giveaway being provided by Ulus to Ulus, which is a local kind game with local pigeon and local kind stuff made especially for you and all your brothers and sisters, aunties and uncles and kupuna and keiki. I played it with my family before. It's hilarious. I love the game. Go to Hawaii Verse right now on Instagram to enter. Okay. Our guest today is a native Hawaiian professional surfer from the island of Oahu. This local brother has been surfing since he was just a kid and is a household name in the surfing world. He is a Mayo Visla Pro Ericera champion and winner of two Vans World Cups at Sunset Beach. This talented surfer still has so much more to accomplish, but winning the title of ABC's Ultimate Surfer is a pretty good start and a cool title to add to anyone's resume, as well as being a brand ambassador for companies like Quicksilver, Rockstar, Electric, The Kind, and many more. If you can't find him in the water, you can find him on YouTube vlogging about his life. He is a man with relentless determination and crazy discipline. His name is Ezekiel Lau. Aloha, Zeke. Welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Good, good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. When I first started this podcast, I had the idea to start the podcast. You're one of the first people that came to mind. Oh, wow. Right on. Thank you. I was uh, watching The Ultimate Surfer. Oh, okay. It was around that time. Right on. Yeah, and uh, I'm kind of like new into the surfing world. I was a COVID surfer. So what what did you think about the show? I thought it was great. Well, (laughs) for me, I, I love supporting local athletes. You know, anytime I watch football or I guess not many basketball or baseball you know mm-hmm. Colton Wong Kian Wong yeah, you know yeah. I love seeing them and just supporting even though I don't necessarily watch baseball uh-huh. or certain sports so when I saw that you're going to be on the ultimate <laughs> surfer I was like oh this is a good way for me to get into surfing yeah and yeah. also support a local brada you know no, yeah it was good I think that that show is good for that exact purpose it mm-hmm. kind of reached a different crowd and it was a little more simplified mm-hmm. um to the average person because i feel like a lot of the things with like high level competitive surfing is like super hard to understand yeah so i felt like that show kind of hit those little yeah. areas and and you know appealed for to a different crowd definitely yeah, yeah i didn't even think about that but yeah, yeah. It, 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 i was part of that demographic <laughs> yeah for sure. yeah i mean you so you had an eventful year you um Won the Ultimate Surfer, congrats. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Won the Portugal event, mm-hmm. got married, yep. congrats, newlywed. So yeah, you're just riding so much momentum this past year. Yeah. And uh, you know, you, you right now you're just back home taking a mm-hmm. break um, and we have a lot more to talk about. But yeah. before we get into everything, I got to know where you're from, where you grad and what was it like growing up? Um, I'm from right here. I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii. I grew up in town. Um, I went to high school at Kamehameha Schools. I graduated in 2012. Um, but funny enough, I actually grew up on campus. Uh, my mom was a dorm advisor, so uh, we actually lived on campus pretty much my whole life wow. uh, until I was like 20, 22 years old. I lived on campus at Kamehameha. Um, basically, my mom's job was to take care of the kids that wanted to go Kamehameha that came from the outer islands because this is like before um, they had like the Maui campus and and the Big Island campus. So, you know, kids would travel from the outer islands and stay and live on the campus. And then my mom was basically like their mom as well. Wow, that's so crazy. So uh, we actually lived on campus and the school provided us housing and stuff. So, so what, was I it up there an actual life. house or it was like an apartment? Or? It was an imp- it was a apartment in, within the dorm of, uh, dormitory. Okay. Um, actually, I grew up in the gr- girls' dorm. Oh. <laughs> so uh, it was a little like a one bedroom, uh, one bath uh, um, apartment. Okay. And me and my three sisters and a girls' dormitory. So I grew up around a lot of women. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and you, you, you have siblings and they're all girls, right? Yeah, I have three younger yeah. sisters. Um, uh, me and the older one went to Kamehameha. Mm-hmm. And then the other two, uh, the younger two went to Punahou. Oh, okay. So is there a reason why it's split? Um, not really. I think that was just like me and my older sister or the oldest of the mm-hmm. three are uh, a little more athletic. Mm-hmm. And we like sports and kind of... I don't know, we're just totally different to where Kamehameha kind of suited us. And then yeah. the younger two were like way more academic and I think more progressive progressive learners than oh, we were. So yeah, yeah. kind of put a whole appeal to them a little more. And 
luckily they were the last two so maybe mom and them had a little bit more budget <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah oh that's so yeah that's so interesting did you go to explorations i never went explorations never and explorations. i only got into kumea when i was in seventh grade oh, okay where were you before so i went to my my elementary oh okay. which is like Straight right down. uh right down the road from kumea yeah, yeah in nuwana so i went there uh till sixth grade and then luckily i got in kumea seventh grade and then Yeah, went all the way through high school. Okay, good. You were you're a happy. You were in just private school all your yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah. in public school first. I think yeah. I think that's the best way. Yeah, yeah. yeah you kind of get the best of both yeah. both worlds. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Did you enjoy going to Kamehameha, or, or did you enjoy the cultural aspect of it? Um. Well, for, at first for me it was a little hard. Um. When I was trying out for Kamehameha, I was already re pretty deep into the surfing, and. You never let go of school, huh? <laughs> and yeah, I mean, a lot of the kids that I was surfing with back then, they were going home school and they were traveling, doing big events around the world already. And I had luckily had some sponsorship. So I had, you know, the opportunity to go and do those things. But uh, mom and them said, you know, you got to stay home, got to go to school. And, you know, they wanted me to go to Kamehameha. So, um, so I took the test, I did the interview and I got in and, You know, at first it was a little frustrating for me. I was like, oh, I want to be surfing. You know, I hear guys doing good in contests here. Guys are going trips. You know, this is what I want to do with my life. So I, I want to do that. But, you know, looking back on it and, and, you know, in my later years of high school, it was, it was some of the best times of my life. And my, some of my closest friends still to this day are my friends from high school. So oh, right on. Um, I definitely cherish that part of my life a lot. And I felt like it was everything was all in perfect timing and that was some of my best moments of my life for yeah, sure it's a blessing in disguise yeah for sure i mean it's it's hard to see when you're in it you know yeah, but exactly. when you look back it's just like wow i'm so glad i did that you know? yeah that's awesome how, how did you feel about like all the song contests and doing all that <laughs> thing because so I, i went to hawaiian emerging school uh -huh. all my life and i just I, when you're so cl close to it you're doing it all the time you just don't really care about it i yeah. played sports i played soccer and football so mm -hmm. i didn't care about you know doing all these Hawaiian practices. I just wanted to play soccer and football, mm -hmm. travel, do all those things. So for me, I just I just didn't see the importance of culture yeah. till later after I left Hawaii, after I traveled. Um, so I was wondering maybe if you had a similar kind of... Yeah, I was pretty similar. And mm -hmm. a lot of my friends, were all we all played sports, yeah. kind of like friends were all the jocks. So yeah. <laughs> we just showed up and did what we had to do. But looking back on it now, I definitely wish I... Uh, craved more to learn about my culture and you know I took Hawaiian for three years and you know I left high school and I can't really speak Hawaiian so I'm pretty bummed on that one the most mm -hmm. but never still, too late to learn yeah never too late to learn for sure mm -hmm. but um, I still look back on it and I'm just so glad I was actually able to you know go through those years um, and just learn about my culture at the very least and become proud of it and mm -hmm. you know want to represent it everywhere I go and yeah. I feel like Kamehameha definitely made me do that Yeah, I think you do a great job of representing Hawaii and carrying mm -hmm. the flag with pride. Yeah, yeah I think I'll, I'll teach you one right over here so you can use when you're surfing. Yeah. Make make oi e hakaka. You just tell people that. Make make oi e, e hakaka. hakaka. Yeah, which means, oh, you like fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, actually, that's funny you used that, uh, that, uh, that sentence, like uh, grammatical sentence, because that's probably the only thing I remember from Maki maki. <laughs> um, from taking Hawaiian is like the maki maki oi or maki maki ike kakai. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. As, as far as I went right there. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Well, if anyone ever cut you off, then, you know, maki maki oi hakaka, just tell them that. <laughs> I've heard of some friends, like, you know, it gets, because, you know, surfing, it's kind of, it gets a little aggro, you mm -hmm. know. The surf culture is very, you know, cutthroat. Yeah. Um, and I, I knew this one guy, he would, just go out and if somebody's yelling at him he just starts singing in Hawaiian or when he's saying yeah. something in Hawaiian and like, oh this guy's yeah this guy's the real yeah, deal right here mess with him <laughs> this guy's deep yeah. I guess you don't really have to worry about yeah. that yeah nah it's <laughs> funny like uh, it's just the culture of surfing I guess it's just you know it's hard to say that there's enough ways for everybody especially when it's crowded yeah. so it kind of brings this fight and competitive nature out of everyone but I think if everyone just relaxed and realized there is enough waves for mm -hmm. everyone, it would be a little more calm in the lineup. And if people take turns and, you know, was, uh, I got to remind myself as well, you know, competitive surfing brings out a lot of that competitive drive. And, you know, I'm trying to practice as much as I can and do this and that. But, 
you know, I always got to remind myself I surf because, you know, I love just being in the ocean. You know, yeah. I love, you know, riding waves and just having fun. It doesn't matter what kind of board or, you know, with or without the board, just being in the ocean, I can body surf or do whatever. And it still brings me the same type of joy. So, yeah, it's got to bring it back to that. That's every an time. interesting perspective I didn't think about it. for someone who surfs for leisure yeah. over somebody that surfs for their career. You know, you're out there, like, it's practice, really. I mean, yeah. it is practice for, you know, anybody <laughs> learning, right? Yeah. But you, like, you're practicing, like, how if you were a basketball player, mm -hmm. you'd be in a gym shooting free throw, shooting three-pointers. Yeah. But if, you know, there's just a bunch of random people around you kind <laughs> of, like, shooting, you know, doing layouts in front of you, I can see how that could be kind of annoying. Yeah, I mean, it gets frustrating, but I think that's the best part about surfing for especially the fans, you know. It's the only sport where... You can paddle out to a spot and you can see the best surfers in the world and mm -hmm. you can sit right next to them and yeah, you know, share waves. True, yeah. You know, LeBron James, that ain't just like <laughs> playing pickup games, you know, in yeah. the street, really. Yeah, yeah. So oh, it's pretty crazy that you can paddle out and you can go to the North Shore and, you know, surf waves on the North Shore and you're probably going to see some some big names out there. So I think yeah, that's yeah. the best part about our sport. Super true. How, how did you get into surfing? Because you come from a, like a, uh, like a, a sports family, but more like... Land sports. land sports yeah yeah my whole family plays land sports and i did too but uh surfing my dad got into surfing when he was in college when he was playing at the university of hawaii he's playing football and all his friends were just super into surfing and uh so he got kind of into it during college and then they had me so he was like pretty heavy into it at that point and they were just taking me to the beach pretty much every day every weekend um and I just loved the ocean. I was so comfortable in it. And, you know, they said I could just, I was swimming at three years old and I was just getting pounded in the shore break, laughing, you know, it's just, it was super natural for me. And, yeah. you know, I think that was something that me and my dad did for leisure, pretty much. And uh, everything else was, you know, the sports and all the land sports stuff were a little bit more serious to where mm -hmm. like, he kind of took that competitive approach where we'd go to the beach and, you know, it was like my time. I was like, oh, I get to just play, you know? But then slowly it turned into like, okay, we're going to do contests and start doing this and that. And then his competitive nature started creeping into the surfing and then started pushing me more. And um, yeah, it was kind of just a mixture of everything. And But surfing was definitely something that came more natural to me and was something that I just loved doing. It, it's something that was just inherently Hawaiian, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. you just like, you were drawn to it. Exactly. It's I mean, part it's, of the culture. it's like when... I don't know. It's like when someone that's really good at something, they just understand, like, I just look at it and I understand it. Mm -hmm. I know what it is. I know how to do it. Yeah. It's just, it speaks to me and it's easy to get, you know, where, you know, I grew up playing soccer and basketball and stuff. And I felt like I had to try so hard mm -hmm. to understand what the heck was going on. <laughs> and I'm trying to follow guys. And it was a super stressful thing yeah. where surfing was, I didn't even have to think. It was just mm -hmm. go out there and do my thing. Do you think it, it had to do with being like a team sport and kind of an individual sport where, you know, surfing, you do have a team, you know, training yeah. and you know, coaches, but you know, it's, you're competing by yourself. I you think know, so. You don't have to rely on anyone else. Exactly. I think, uh, it was just easier for me to comprehend, you mm -hmm. know, it's just like, okay, I go out there and I do this and my relationship is with the ocean and mm -hmm. not really with like someone else or other mm -hmm. people, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, and I think maybe that's why surfers are a little bit weirdos because we kind of <laughs> just, we kind of, are outcasts or we're a little bit antisocial or a little socially awkward because you know our best relationship is with mother nature and the ocean and that's our the best version of ourselves and that's what we understand the easiest so yeah. sometimes if surfers act a little bit awkward yeah. on land that's probably why <laughs> oh, okay no wonder when i met you i was like oh this guy is so weird <laughs> <laughs> well i i, I want to ask you um about your hair growing up. Mm -hmm. So you, you were like bolo head, yeah? I yeah. never had any hair until I don't know how old. But what, what was the reason behind that? Yeah, so now I got a full head of hair, thank yeah. God. Oh, um, nice, show, yeah, show, show it off to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so but, I, hey, he's taking ladies, watch <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, growing up, like I said, my dad was super competitive and pushed us, all three of my other siblings as well, pushed us in sports a lot. And if I can share a little bit about that, that's more so just because that's, you know, for us, that was our path. You know, this is what he he thought was going to be the recipe to give us the best chance for the best education and, you know, be able to go to college and create uh, opportunities for ourselves. So he really pushed us 
in that sense, um, you know, that's what he could give to us. And, and he was really passionate about that. So he really pushed us in athletics and sports and stuff. So in saying that, that started to creep in a lot into the surfing part to where it became a hobby and something we did to have fun. And then next thing I know, I was doing contests and doing this and that. And, you know, he's a goal setter. Mm -hmm. So he set some goals for me. And um, he started shaving my head every day. And I was I was asking him, like, oh, when, when can I grow my hair out? You know, when can I grow my hair out? I'm over. I don't Wait, like you people. you even know why? No, no. He's just like, we just can <laughs> shave your head. You can be different. You can be different. That's all he kept telling me. Okay. He's like, because to him, surfers were these long haired, mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes, long hair, kind of hippie looking yeah, guys. He's like, the North Shore. We can stand yeah. out. You know, this is going to be our, our thing to, you know, uh, kind of branding myself as, you know, someone different. Oh, okay. um, but then he started using it against me. <laughs> and he's like, okay, if you win this contest right here, then you can grow your hair out. And that went on for a couple of years. <laughs> so actually, uh, he would he told me I, if I won NSSA Nationals, mm -hmm. which was the biggest like amateur events for us back then, uh, if I want to say nationals, I could grow my hair out and then I never need be bull ahead anymore. Yeah. And that went on for like three, four years. And then finally, when I was 15 years old, uh, I won my first national title, nice. um, the open juniors national title. And then, um, he let me grow my hair out, but I still kind of like kept one buzz cut. I yeah, still yeah. never really know what I liked yet and mm -hmm. what I identified with, but you know, it was funny that story actually. What he did worked because it stood out. That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, because I think people remember like that, like the bolo head Zeke. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, it did stand out. Yeah, yeah. That's so that's so crazy. When you were, because you were in like middle school, high school around that time. Yeah. Did you ever feel self conscious? Oh, for sure. <laughs> I mean, this was from like elementary. Like wow. I think I was like he started doing it when I was ten years old. I actually came back from a trip from Japan. Yeah. This company flew us out to go do their their local surf contest in Japan in the summertime, um, which I was really fortunate to go to do, go and do and experience when I was mm -hmm. like ten years old. But all the older guys went like tie me down and shave my head, you know, I'd call it like uh, grom abuse. <laughs> it's kind of like an initiation thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then tie me down, shave my head, so I came home all bola head, and my dad was like. Oh, I like that. Oh, so it's their fault. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then ever since then, he just kept shaving my head. And he's like, yeah, we're going to be different, blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. Uh, so that's pretty much right. Wow, that's from. interesting. Okay. So speaking about other surfers, who who did you look up to? Did you have any mentor mentors, role models? Um, well, the first ever surf video I ever got was called Sunny Days. Mm -hmm. And it was about Sunny Garcia. Oh, right on. Uh, so he was definitely one of the biggest inspirations for me. Being that he was a native Hawaiian too, and mm -hmm. you know he wasn't from the North Shore, and he yeah. kind of came from a local upbringing, yeah, he's more local family, too. more rugged yeah. from West Side. Mm -hmm. um, so he definitely, you know, I took a liking to him, and I liked his style of surfing mm -hmm. was just raw and mm -hmm. powerful, yeah, and yeah. you know that's kind of like for Hawaiian surfers, that's kind of like the 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 role we want to fit in the surfing industry. He's just big, strong surfers mm -hmm. that surf big waves, and you know he was that guy all the way. Mm -hmm. And for him to go out and win a world title, that was super inspiring. And, you know, I remember I used to watch that video every day, every day, and mm -hmm. just be waiting for my dad to take me surf. Yeah. Um, and then fortunately enough, I actually got to, uh, my dad let me skip school one day <laughs> for my <laughs> birthday and go watch the contest at Haliva. Oh, right and Sonny ended up winning. So oh, I was able to watch that cool. and take a picture yeah. with him after. And, you know, it's funny, you know, I never really thought that, you know, Sonny was such a hero to me, you know, as he was someone that was just like I looked up to. And then later on in life, you know, I started doing it. And I started actually, you know, making a push to, you know, becoming a pro surfer. And, you know, Sonny actually came and started mentoring me and talking to me and kind of being in my corner, which was really cool. I, you know, when I was a little kid, I would have never thought that that yeah, was going to yeah. happen. So that's amazing. Yeah, Sonny was definitely one of my biggest inspirations. And then um, also like Andy Irons, Bruce Irons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Legend. Yeah. Yeah. Dang, that's really cool. And did were you able to uh, meet Andy? I was able to meet Andy actually later on in my like once I kind of was in the pro ams. Um, my coach David Riddle, he's from the North Shore. He actually coached Andy, so um, Andy had come over for dinner a couple nights, and I've met him that's and awesome. had a couple of meals with him. So it was, it was awesome, and those are moments that I cherish a mm -hmm. lot. And you know, those are just you know days on the weekends that I got yeah. to 
go out and stay at my coach's house and surf the North Shore and, you know, I get to, you know, sit down with some of my heroes. I mean, you know, going to school and then going to be able to do that on the weekends was was crazy for me. And mm -hmm. I feel like I got the best of both worlds. You know, I got to, mm -hmm. you know, live my normal life with my, my real friends and, and go to school and grow as a kid and then also experience stuff like that for my, you know, my career in surfing yeah. and stuff. How awesome was it when you graduated and you're like, oh, no homework anymore. I could just <laughs> surf all day. Honestly, uh, I actually, so I did my first two pro events uh, the summer before my senior year because it was kind of like my transition. Like, mm -hmm. hey, I'm, I'm going to do this after I graduate. Mm -hmm. So um, my coach at the time signed me up for some pro events in South America and, mm -hmm. you know, just getting my feet wet. And, you know, I actually did really well in those events. I actually won one of them. And I was like, holy crap, okay, I can do this. But then all the travel was like gnarly for me. Like I, I didn't actually understand how much it took and how much it would wear on me. So I was excited to go back to school my <laughs> senior year. I was like, oh, I just want to finish this last year and be a kid and hang out with my friends yeah. and not worry about traveling and doing all that. So I was actually a little sad after graduating high school. I was like, oh, I actually got to go out and, you know, I got to be in the real world now. And yeah make a name for yourself you cannot just be in the comfort of your home with your mom and your friends and you like know Kamehameha your family Kamehameha, <laughs> and Kamehameha is like real like it's actually everyone's real close yeah. you know so everyone's Ohana. like yeah I felt like a separation anxiety almost mm. when I left but yeah you know you, we still stay in touch and everyone's still close now so you know I created those bonds which is you know real good mm -hmm. so do you enjoy being on tour or you know competing in the um, Q, QS is that what yeah yeah, because um, when I was, so when Kikoa Casimero mm -hmm. was on the podcast, we talked about, you know, he's he's a free surfer now, yeah. right? And he said, you know, some sometimes you have to go to these competitions and the waves are terrible. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't really show your, your true, like, potential, you yeah. know, your, your true skill. So does that, that ever frustrate you? Um, It did a lot, you know, in the beginning. It took me a few years to really figure it out and, a lot of frustrating events, years and years. I'd go a year without, you know, making a heat. And, you know, it's it's just hard. You, there's so much to learn. You know, you're learning about these new waves and these this new type of surfing yeah. and, and surfing to a criteria at such a high level on top of, you know, traveling and, and reconstructing your life to, to do this. And, you know, I was sitting in a classroom for, you know, six hours a day. And then now I wake up and I kind of, have to make my own schedule you know i can i can surf if i want to surf or i can do nothing if i want to do nothing mm -hmm. so i kind of was lost i think after yeah. i graduated high school i was just trying to figure everything out um which you know i mean it took some time but i think i grew to really love it and I under, once i understood everything then i was able to understand the game and be okay this is you know every little piece of the puzzle matters so mm -hmm. you know i can perform at my best and i just I was, I learned how to use it to, uh, bring out the best in me mm -hmm. and, uh, I learned how to just structure my life. So basically, um, I could better myself every day because, mm -hmm. you know, I was showing up to events and not prepared and didn't feel good and didn't know how to travel or do the traveling right. So really made those things difficult. So I was able to just learn all those things, make the adjustments and, you know, make the push to qualify for the tour, which I did in, in 2016. Um, so if you think about it, if I graduated in 2012 and I qualified 2016, it took me like four years. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically college. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so my college was a little bit different. <laughs> you had your freshman year, sophomore, yeah, senior year. Exactly. Yeah. After and then senior year, my senior year, year I did NFL. it. <laughs> yeah, Whatever so. It is, yeah. You got drafted. <laughs> I got drafted or I got brought up to, <laughs> yeah. to the world tour and... Uh, you know, that was just, you know, I passed that one stage of my life mm -hmm. and then it was pretty much got there and had to relearn it all over mm -hmm. again. You know, I was on tour. It was a different level, mm -hmm. different level of traveling and, you know, organization and organizing your life. And then I realized like, okay, now I got to like step out of my parents' home and create a life for myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to, you know, reach my full potential. Um, so yeah, it was just a lot of learning and, and, uh, you know, it took some time, but I'm glad I went through each step. And, you know, I'm still going through it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm still learning things. And, yeah. you know, um, yeah, it's just a constant journey and yeah. constant. You have to have the will to want to learn and, and grow. Yeah, and not be afraid to fail and, you know, step outside your comfort zone. And, 
you know, it sounds like you're at some point you're kind of just forced to, you know, take these steps, take these yeah. this next journey. Uh, but it 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 was for the best, yeah, you know. For and sure. Yeah, I think sometimes you just need a little push too. Yeah, just to yeah. like get out there and like your your father was one of those guys who just always pushed you. It sounds like. Yeah, yeah, my dad definitely pushed me and and pushed all of us. You know, me and all my sisters and. You know, it's funny, and, and for Hawaii, it's, like, so awkward almost to be a surfer and go to school and, like, pursue surfing as, like, a profession. You know, surfing is a leisure here. It's yeah. something everyone just does for fun. So when you say you're a professional surfer, it's kind of like, okay, but do you have, like, a job? <laughs> <laughs> do do people can, work side jobs? Like, I mean, guys do. Yeah. Guys do, but, I mean, if you want to get to that highest level, uh, your job is to make yourself marketable and create a brand for yourself and you know so that you're marketable and you can represent these brands and mm. help these companies you know push these products so that they can kind of support your dream and, and you do the same thing for them mm -hmm. so it's all your job is basically to find backing and then find support mm -hmm. so you can go out yeah. and do these events um, so that's basically your job but it's just funny how you know growing up in Hawaii the path is laid out for you to make it to college. And that's mm -hmm. through, you know, your academics or, mm -hmm. you know, like my dad was pushing us to do was through sports. Mm -hmm. So he, he gave us all the tools that we needed to do to, you know, do it through sports. And, you know, we didn't have the, m the funding or budget in our family to, you know, pay for college. You know, we needed a, to ball out pretty much yeah. and get a scholarship of some sort so that we could give ourselves the best opportunity. Um, so that's why, you know, towards the end of my high school career, making a big decision was, you know, what am I going to do? Am I going to, mm -hmm. you know. Was college ever a thought? I mean, college for me was not a thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, I'm surfing. Yeah, this yeah. is what I'm doing. But for my parents and, you know, them looking and wanting the best for me, they had to think of everything. You know, they, they understand that there's so much risk with being an athlete, especially young. You know, there's your mind's still developing, your mm -hmm. body's still developing. You don't know what's going to happen in 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um so my mom and my dad were really, you know, looking at it from a different perspective and just really wanted me to be okay. And my mom was definitely pushing for me to go to college, but uh, that's why my dad, you know, got us, you know, athletically sound and, and ready to go. So if we needed mm -hmm. to, you know, play sports to do that or, or, you know, do it in the classroom, then, you know, we had that option too. But I think once it came to my junior year, I told my parents, like, this is what I want to do. Yeah. And I, I don't know anything else. Like I know this mm -hmm. and I, I'm confident. And right now I feel like I can do it. So, you know, I'm glad that they had the trust mm -hmm. in me to be able to back me and let me do this, which is, you know, a blessing. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that was definitely the push. And that made me feel like, you know, if I was fortunate enough to get this opportunity to pursue my dream as a professional mm -hmm. surfer, then I should just put everything I have into it and, mm -hmm. you know, make it to the world stage and, you know, represent Hawaii and represent my family. Yeah. Were you super confident that you would excel? Like you'd, you could be one of the best surfers. You could make a living from this. Because I see a lot of surfers, like good surfers. Mm -hmm. um, but how, like how good do you, do you have to be to make a living, you know, to mm -hmm. live a sustainable, good life? Like how, how is the pay? Like you would have, do you have to always win events? You know, is it more sponsorships? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard to make a full living off surfing. Um, this isn't one of those, like, this isn't football. This isn't basketball. This isn't f UFC fighting, you know, mm -hmm. there's not as much money, um, in surfing just because not as much people around the world surf. I mean, not as much people have waves, you know, mm -hmm. I always say, I don't think I would surf if I didn't live in Hawaii. <laughs> mm. What do you think you'd be doing? I have no idea. Uh -huh. That's why it's just really hard for me to see myself, one, living anywhere else, two, not surfing, and three, surfing and living somewhere else. You know, yeah. like those things, like they don't, I don't understand those things. Like I couldn't <laughs> do that. Couldn't do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's like, I forget what the stat is, but it's like, they call it like the 2%. The mm -hmm. 2% of the surfing world is those guys that, make enough money to make a full living and full career out of it. And that's basically like if you're on tour. Mm. So if you qualify for the world championship tour, you're pretty much 
making enough money to sustain and create a future and mm-hmm. and uh sustain your life with just that yeah but that's because you have sponsorships that are going to support you because you're on tour mm. but there's a lot of surfers that are on tour that don't have sponsors so then i don't really i don't know how that's working because the pay from just the event isn't that much yeah i mean you went 100 grand per event but if you think about how much money it costs to travel and stay at that place training and, and, and training that. And then you're regular living on top of that, like whether you have a house at home or, yeah. you know, all those things. So, Kind of sounds like the UFC where, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like they, the UFC. Yeah, they don't get, unless you're like at the top, top level, top. Max Holloway, yeah. you know, John Jones, all those those really, you know, su- uh, successful and like world-class athletes. Yeah. Then you're not making the big bucks and yeah. you're just kind of like maybe get like 40,000, but then out of that 40,000, 15 goes to your mm-hmm. manager, you know, 10 goes to your coach like, and yeah. then you end up with like 5,000 left right? exactly yeah but that's why I think uh, it's important to understand why you're doing it mm. and you know I got to remind myself that all the time you know I yeah. you just because most of the time you're just chasing it you see that where you want to be you want to mm. be one of those guys that's making all that money so you just like head down going 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 mm. and then when it's not working it's like you're basically just banging your head up against a wall just trying to get there yeah. And sometimes you got to just take a step back and realize, you know, why am I doing this? Why is it so hard? It mm-hmm. shouldn't be this hard. This, like I said, when I first started, this was natural to me. Mm-hmm. It was easy. I understood it. When I felt the water, I felt at home. So those are the things you got to bring yourself back to. Mm-hmm. I heard this quote of, I think BJ Penn said it on hey. Joe Rogan's podcast. Yeah, shout out he to said, BJ. Yeah, he said, uh, uh, this is an opportunity, not a career. Mm. To be, he was saying it about fighting, but I think it's the same for surfing. Yeah. You know, this is an opportunity to live your dream and, you know, create goals for yourself and push yourself and and something that you really love to do. Yeah, I think I think that's so cool. I mean, you get to surf for a living. You know, yeah. surfing's one of the greatest feelings ever. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, Jordan, and she loves <laughs> surfing. <laughs> Jordan's a surfer too. He's all shy now. <laughs> I was trying to. Uh, call out Jordan some episodes but yeah I think it, like the the feeling of surfing is mm-hmm. like no other just catching a wave you could go straight and just be on that wave and it feels so cool but once you you know start to progress you can turn you can yeah. walk you can do these things it's like the coolest feeling ever and you get to do that for a living yeah you get to get paid for that <laughs> I don't get to get paid for that <laughs> exactly I mean that's why I gotta remind myself and you know to be honest I was having a pretty rough year mm-hmm. um I just fell off the halfway cut of the world tour uh, a couple months ago. And that was really hard because I felt like I'd worked so hard to get back on tour. And, you know, I was, you know, thinking I was going to come back on and make a statement. You know, I'm a different person now. You know, I've, I've made the adjustments. I've, I've grown in so many different ways. I've grown in my life and, and who I am as a person on top of being a surfer. So, you know, I was ready to come out and make a statement. And, you know, obviously that didn't happen. I was struggling. You know, something mentally wasn't really there. And um, after it all happened, I kind of fell into a little point of just some depression and just, you know, feel really bummed on myself and how I performed, how I acted and, and, you know, certain things that the way they unfolded. So I got to come home and just sit back and reflect. And I think sometimes when I'm just away from home, I, I forget all those things. And, you know, I'm able to come home and really just sit back and go wow I'm really fortunate to you know live this life and you know have my family here I live in the, mo- the most beautiful place in the world and probably doing the one of, one of the most beautiful things ever as a career yeah and uh you know I wake up every morning and start writing it down I just write you know 10 things that I'm grateful for right. in my life every day and it's just changed the way I look at everything now and you know mm-hmm. it's definitely helped me feel better every day and just it's inspiring when you do that because it makes you look back and go, wow, you know, I have a lot, you know, instead of Definitely. focusing on all the things you don't have. 100%. Yeah, I yeah. love that you said that. Are you a spiritual guy? Are you into meditation, like manifestation, crystals, <laughs> <laughs> horoscopes? <laughs> no, I mean, I don't really know. I, I feel like uh, surfing is already pretty spiritual, mm-hmm. but I'm more of like a, f- a feel guy. Mm-hmm. So I just go a lot of my things and... Uh, everything I do, I just go based off how I feel. But I grew up uh, a Christian, Christian mm-hmm. boy. My my family was, uh, you know, we grew up going to church, and um, I was raised Christian, and, and that's how I learned all my life values, and and you know, I still carry that with me now. So, 
I mean, you could say I'm a pretty spiritual guy, but, you know, I feel like I've learned a lot and, you know, through traveling. Mm -hmm. So for me, I feel like uh, I just use what I've learned growing up as a kid, you know, with the Christian values and, you know, try and apply it the best I can and just learn a lot more from my experiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of experiences, you had a pretty quick experience on the Ultimate Surfer. Yeah. And that, you know, that came at a point where you were off the tour. Mm Mm-hmm. And it was an opportunity. We talked yep. about opportunities for you to get back on the tour. Mm-hmm. So how did that come out? And like, were you were you forced to do it, or something that you wanted to do? Because I feel like you're not really a yeah. like a fame and fortune. Like I yeah. want to be on TV. I want to be no. famous. You, I mean, when I watched it, you're just all business. Yeah, yeah. I when I saw it, I was like, this guy's gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> like, like he's so focused. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. The the ultimate server was funny because uh, I'd fell off tour, so that had given me all this time. Mm-hmm. So I've, you have way more time. You're doing less events when you're not on tour. So give me all this time. And then this opportunity for the show came up. I actually got an email from uh, my sponsor, Quicksilver. And they were like, hey, check this out. This might be cool for you to do since you're not on tour. I don't know if you're into it, but just check it out. Maybe do the, the casting interview and see where it all falls. And I look at my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife. I looked at Jenna, I was like, what do you think? Should I do this? Or like, is that weird? (laughs) And then uh, she was like, looked at it. Then we kind of did some research and looked it up and we saw like, oh, ABC's behind it and stuff. And she was like, well, if Quicksilver asked you to check it out, then you should at least like do the casting. So I was like, all right, did the casting, did it, didn't think anything of it. While I was doing the casting, I was getting ready to go to Australia to compete uh, on the the WQS to qualify to get back on tour. Mm -hmm. And um, on my way... I'm like about to leave to Australia in like two or three days. And then the casting guy calls and like, hey, you got accepted to do the final casting. Can you stop in LA um, in two days and, and do the final casting? They're going to do an interview. They'll put you up in the hotel, pay for your flight, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh my gosh. So this is actually going to happen maybe. <laughs> like, I guarantee yeah, what you was thinking. I was, like, was oh, my boys are going to roast me. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, bro. <laughs> like, I don't know if I can. Reality TV is not me right now. Yeah. <laughs> and then my wife was just like, just go do it. Who cares? Just have fun with it. And I was already leaving to go to, Cal- uh, to Australia. So I was like, okay, go do the casting. Boom. Don't think anything of it. Go to Australia. Do my events. And then sure enough, they're giving a call back that I got accepted and mm-hmm. if I wanted to do it. So I was like, I guess I'm doing it. I mean, if for me, like like I said, I'm a field guy and I felt like that all just kind of came to me. I wasn't really going out there searching for it. So mm-hmm. I was like, you know, sometimes you just got to mm-hmm. go with the flow. If yeah, that opportunity yeah. came, I got to try and make the best of it. And, yeah. you know, that was my goal going into it. So yeah, Yancy Madero says flow with the goal. Yeah, exactly. Goal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yancy's my boy. I love Yancy. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so so you did that, and uh, how how was that experience? Was, was it weird for you at first? Was it awkward being around so many cameras all the time? Were you vlogging before then? No. Oh, so okay, okay. Uh, actually, look. So the Ultimate Surfer was actually for me one of the best experiences for me, um, and I think it was for a lot of reasons, but mostly it really just got me out of my comfort zone. It's not that I'm like awkward around cameras and stuff and i'm used to you know having cameras i mean i get filmed every day to surf so Mm -hmm. being in front of a camera is not really you know that big of a deal but it was more so just uh competing in that different environment Mm -hmm. so now i'm being filmed and being watched for every little thing i do and um i'm competing in so many different ways like it wasn't just surfing you know we did like a bunch of other challenges, challenges and then like you said you know, when I surf, it's just me and I'm like competing individually mm-hmm. and they kind of teamed us up. Yeah, yeah. So I had to work with like a teammate, but all those different experiences kind of brought the best out of me, I feel like. Um, like my dad's like a, someone who's like a coach, like mm-hmm. the way he talks and, you know, how he talks to us. He's like, he has that coach mentality. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's actually, he coaches uh, at Point Hole. Mm-hmm. Uh, for football. He's a pretty well-known coach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so I, we just kind of have that, in us so when i was like helping out my partners and stuff i kind of like turned on that coach (laughs) switch and that kind of made me you know check in with myself a lot more and and brought the best out of me Mm -hmm. and just the whole experiences i mean i had no phone no computer no tv 
no radio, no music. I wasn't talking to my family mm-hmm. or anyone. How long was it? The 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 actual filming. Uh, the actual filming was like two and a half weeks. Oh, okay. So, so it's actually kind of not as long as it. Not seems. as long, yeah. but um, it was no. actually pretty quick. Yeah. So we filmed an episode in like three days, and there's mm-hmm. three episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, they would give us one call a week to like call uh, our family or loved ones or whatever. Um, but that was crazy, just really being by myself and kind of got me to a, po- a place where I was just like super in tune with, you know, myself and what I was thinking. And yeah. I was just like, dude, I, I got to get off my phone more. I yeah. got to like not watch so much. Right. You were on another level, like yeah. that focus that you're like Mamba mentality. Yeah. Like, it was crazy. And like you and I actually you crushed it. You like absolutely killed it. And uh, it was weird, too. Before I went there, uh, I think uh, Michael Jordan had just come out with his like, last dance. Oh, thing. yeah. Yeah. So right before I went, I was watching that the whole time. So it kind of just flipped me into that like super killer instinct competitive yeah. vibe. But at the same time on the show, I was like real positive and I felt like, you know, I was just wanted to help everyone. And like, yeah. I wasn't like that cutthroat, like pull everybody down so I can get to the top. It was more so just like, you know, trusting myself and just mm-hmm. compete my best and have fun with it. And I think I had a lot of fun and, you know, it was an experience that I feel like uh, I'll remember forever. But, you know, it's just funny because I would have never thought I would do something like that. I probably won't ever do anything like that <laughs> just because it was so nuts just being on camera and like watching it back with all my friends and family. I was just kind of cringing. Like, <laughs> oh, I can't hear myself talk like that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But it was I good guess, fun. yeah, when you see videos of yourself, it's just surfing. There's no talking, right? Yeah, you just, exactly. You, you're like a, an action over talking yeah. kind of guy. Until that yeah. point, and yeah. then um, while I was on the show, you know, I made some, you know, some new relationships and mm-hmm. stuff. And a lot of those guys that are on the show, they do vlogs, and and that's kind of their their oh, route okay. of surfing. So like Cole Smith, mm-hmm. Mason Barnes, like a bunch of those guys, they have like some pretty well known vlogs on YouTube, and they kind of convinced me to do it. They're like, dude, you should start a vlog when you get home. It's like easy, blah blah blah. And so right when I got home from the show, that's what I did. Oh, and then okay. that's how I started uh, the Zeke Unleashed vlog. Oh, okay. So that's why. And the the uh, Ultimate Surfer was filmed a year before it came out, right? Yeah, yeah, So that's yeah, why, yeah. It, so it that's why I kind of like, seemed like I came okay, out with it before. First. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's right. How hard was it not to say anything? Yeah. Like, I know there's like non this, non- Yeah, the NDAs. Yeah, NDAs. And, oh, I, man, I can't. Because I, I watched... I don't really watch many reality shows, but I watched one called The Challenge. Yep. Which um, it's about um, it started from MTV, and I uh-huh. love it because it's like a competition, and they have to wait for so long. And I always think in my head, how do you not tell anybody? Everybody's yeah. probably asking you, and like seeing your reaction if you say something, trying to get anything out of you. Yeah. Like who are you able to tell anyone? Like your wife, your family. Like, are there certain exceptions? Well. Don't say anything uh, that's going to get you in trouble. <laughs> no, no. So you signed the NDA and so I'm going home knowing like it's not going to come out for at least like six months at least. We don't okay. know when really it's going to come out, but six months at least. All my friends know like I was gone to go do this reality show. So I got to go back and tell them like, oh, I kind of tell you, you know, yeah. but uh, they actually gave me a phone call. So I called my wife and I told oh, her okay. what happened. So I could tell her, yeah. um, but Everything else, I had to tell my mom, them, my family, my my cousins, my friends, everyone who knew that I was on the show. I had to tell them, no, nope, I cannot say nothing. Blah blah blah. I have to see when it comes out, and it was one year. That's hard. So it's pretty crazy. Actually, like it was crazy for a while. Like I, the first like three months, like right after I got back from the show, everyone was asking me, asking me, asking me, what was it like? Like wanted to know everything, and I had to just tell them, oh, I cannot tell. You just gotta watch the show. Blah blah blah. But then everyone kind of forgot. Oh, okay. Because it was so long, you know, it came out the summer after we filmed it. And then even I forgot that no one else, (laughs) that no one else knew what happened. (laughs) Wait, 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 did I win? (laughs) Yeah. Um, But it was good fun. And and when the show came out, I was able to like watch it with my whole family. Yeah, I saw the watch parties. Yeah, the watch parties were super fun. And it was, it was fun because it was just something super different. Mm. Like usually in the the contest that we watch, they're live. Mm -hmm. So you're watching it as it happens and, and a lot of my family can't really be at the events that mm-hmm. I'm at mm-hmm. uh, to see me compete and stuff. So it was cool to just watch the, watch yeah. the show with everyone and, and see everyone's reaction and, yeah. and 
kind of make potluck potluck style for the whole thing but yeah but you couldn't um, just give like a couple like head nods <laughs> <laughs> like bro, like did you win <clears throat> cannot over here everybody get big mouth they can <laughs> tell everybody true. so i was <laughs> like i i no can trust you guys i gotta actually true, not tell true, you guys yeah <laughs> oh, that, oh that's so classic all right well um again congrats on on yeah. winning the ultimate surfer I, I really enjoyed it I, I thought it was awesome and just seeing a local boy there's a lot of hawaii people on on it and yeah um, that couple yeah even the the um girl tia she she, she has ties yeah to, no yeah she to we here. actually grew up surfing with tia yeah. here um she grew up on oahu and then she moved to california later yeah and then even the kid ko smith he's well, from Kauai. and then the one from and um, then uh, um, the other one from kai barger's kai, from yeah, from maui yeah so yeah, we actually, yeah. I actually grew up with all those guys. I right knew on. those guys, so it was cool. Yeah. All right. Well, um, we're gonna get into Instagram question right now, okay. and we have a bunch. Nice. So we'll just try to go through all of them. Okay. So Fern Mendo wants to know who do you still keep in touch with from the Ultimate Surfer? Um, we kind of all keep in touch a little bit. Uh, we started a group chat with everyone, but mostly I keep in touch with Cole Smith. Cole Smith's one of my pretty good friends, and Mason Barnes. Kai Barger, of course. Yeah. Uh, Kai, I grew up with, and we're actually pretty close with Tia. My wife is actually mm-hmm. really uh, good friends with Tia. They grew up together, nice. so we're pretty close with Tia. Um, and Luke Davis, I know Luke Davis pretty well before the show as well. So. Okay, nice. Yeah, how how was it being uh, uh, Hawaii finals, right? You and Koa. Yeah, uh, yeah. Is it weird competing against your friends? Like, in surfing the 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 industry is so small that yeah. you get pretty used to it pretty quick because okay. you're gonna compete against your friends a lot especially yeah. if like the most awkward one is when you guys staying together and you get what together when you're staying together oh. when you go to an event and you gotta compete against each other you're like oh brother what are you eating for breakfast <laughs> so I'll slip on some lax yeah, today, yeah. <laughs> but now you get used to it yeah Damn. but that that final with you and Koa Cause I was yeah. fr- when I when I saw it, I was like, "Okay, there's no way Zeke is losing. There's no way." Yeah. I mean, I didn't watch. I I keep up with surfing a little bit, but I, I you know I didn't really know too much about the surfing world. But I I knew like, okay, this guy's good. Yeah. And just watching you surf, I was like, "Okay, there's no way anybody can beat him." Mm-hmm. And then Cole went. He had like a nine something. Yeah. I was like, "Oh, I think." He just lost. Yeah. And I guess maybe it's this good uh, editing. Yeah. Well, I wish they showed the whole. Uh, the whole like sequence of how mm. we competed because they we, they gave us like three waves each oh, and okay. i went on two then he went on two and then we each had one last go okay um i wish they showed the whole thing because it was actually really close oh it looked really like, close i thought you lost yeah, yeah yeah it was actually as close as they were making it but like yeah. i had to do it on one of my last waves which was they made it look like it was a right but i had to do it on a left because mm. we're actually competing and they're judging based yeah, on they're yeah. going to find a winner and then they kind of and that's kinda, backside for you right you're, you're it was right backside yeah. yeah and I had fallen on, on one of my waves which is like this is my last chance oh, to did do they it show that you they didn't show oh, that okay. so it was actually oh. closer because I messed up a little bit and I was like oh, oh no but it was pretty cool but Cole was ripping I mean yeah. for me it was it was insane because I've been to the pool a bunch and I've competed there in, in the on the world tour twice and I had struggled competing there. And to see how fast Koa picked it up was pretty insane. Yeah. But then, I mean, you were killing it on almost every single challenge. And then <laughs> that last one where you hit, you just, you got the perfect 10. Yeah. I was yeah. like, hey, that gotta be a perfect 10. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah it's, it's funny because I was just like, I was yeah. really, my, me and my mom, we watched it. And wow. Yeah. It was just, it was super, super exciting. Yeah. So, stoked. Yeah. Stoked, stoked that you won. Okay. So, this next one comes from underscore Sinaj. This person wants to know, how come you couldn't use your wild cards from winning the surf show for GLAN and mm-hmm. following events? Um, I'm not really sure. I think those wild cards are still there, so maybe they might put me in mm-hmm. here and there, but uh, I think those got put on the back burner because I qualified, okay, actually. So you didn't need them. So I didn't need them, mm-hmm. and I was able to compete in five events on tour this year. Mm-hmm. So that's already more than I would have got if I didn't qualify. Okay. So, so how how does the tour work? You you have to always like be in like this higher tier. If yeah. Not, you so get regulated. So the world championship tour is the best thirty two surfers in the world. Okay. And you go and compete in twelve events, or this year is ten. Mm-hmm. It's changed from over the years. Before you you just had to be top twenty two at the end of the year, mm-hmm. and the bottom ten switches out 
with the top 10 from the qualifying series. Okay. So the bottom 10 from the tour will go back to the QS and then the qualifying series that guys that qualified in on the qualifying series yeah. will come <laughs> up. So the 10 the bottom 10 of the tour drops and then the top 10 of the QS comes up. And it changes throughout the year. And it changes every year, but okay. this year was the first year they did a what they call a halfway cut. Mm -hmm. So after the first 5 events, they cut the bottom 10 guys. Okay. And they had to go down to the QS. And the rest of the year is going to finish out with the top 22 guys. And then the guys that fell off tour have to requalify to get back on the next okay. year. Okay. So are you pow pow or you can you still have a chance to? Yeah. So I dropped off. I was, I finished 20, I think I finished like 24th. Like I just oh. missed the cut um, after the first five events this year. So I have to go back down to the qualifying series. And there are eight events this year that I have to do. And if I do good and I'm top 10 on the qualifying series rankings, then I'll be back on tour next year. Okay, yeah. You just, yeah. And you, you're all about uh, these uh, clutch moments, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. just like to keep us on the edges <laughs> of our feet, see. Like that one in the wave in Portugal yeah, where you Portugal. basically landed on the rocks. Yeah, I right know. Right the, the last second. That was nuts. I know, it's crazy. Yeah. So most of my heats... Most of my good heats end like that, which yeah. is, I'd rather just not have it like that, but it's <laughs> you just like how the pressure, it goes. Baby. Yeah. yeah. You want that game winning shot. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question comes from Machuka underscore 216. They want to know any advice for a 27 year old beginner? 27 year old beginner. Um, my first thing I would tell you is start on a bigger board. Like a long board. A long board. It makes your life a lot easier. And don't focus so much on the surfing part when you're on that board. Um, that board's just going to be easy to navigate the ocean mm. because you have more foam under you. But I'd focus on on reading the ocean mm. first yeah, before yeah. you worry about the surfing part. The surfing part will come pretty fast uh, once you learn how to read the ocean. So first two things would be ride a bigger board and learn how to read the ocean. That I, w I would say that's great advice because... <clears throat> I you know I play sports all my life. Yeah. I have the athletics. I balance. I uh -huh. slack line. But the thing that really that I struggled with was reading the ocean because yeah. I never grew up in the ocean. Yeah. So you know knowing where to position myself, like how which way to go left or right, I was always so confused. Yeah. Even yeah. growing up bodyboarding in uh, Hilo, my friends would always go, but I, I would go sometimes, and I would always be like, hey, which way do I go, left or right? Mm -hmm. And then I'd just go one way, like right into the rocks or something. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, that being comfortable with the ocean and like figuring it out. It yeah. just, it takes time, right? Yeah, it takes time and you have to experience a lot. So the hard part about surfing is like, you got to be put in some tough situations and make dues. it out of. Yeah. yeah. And then you'll learn like, okay, yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I won't maybe do, I, maybe do I should again. figure out how to, you know, not be in that situation. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of it's from uh, just watching from land. Mm -hmm. the, the ocean works in sequences and mm -hmm. it's a rhythm thing. Yeah? yeah. So a lot of the things that are happening in the ocean happen more than once over and over and over so if you're able to watch and identify that from then it'll make your time in the water a lot easier yeah that's true i, I like to observe when yeah. I, even in, when i'm in the water just seeing how people like get up how, how they move forward or yeah. how, how they do their cuts yeah it's it's so fun yeah all right brie avel wants to know do you ever get scared of sharks yes i get scared of sharks all the time we actually seen a shark couple of days ago at Kualos. Oh, no, <clears throat> um, we were all sitting in the lineup um, and one kind of just swam right through. Funny enough though, nobody went in. <laughs> everybody <laughs> stayed out. I was, hoping, okay. I was hoping everybody was going to go in after. <laughs> but no, I get scared of sharks all the time. It's just something that you deal with. Um, I don't really get as scared at home here just because I'm so comfortable in these waters. But when we travel, we go to some sharky, cold places like South Africa I'm and Australia. South Africa. So it's something you got to kind of just get over and you know, that's where the spiritual part comes in and you mm -hmm. better just start praying and just Spirit trust that you and good person and yeah. <laughs> and the shark not going to pick you. <laughs> hey, but a wise man once said, sharks, they only bite when you touch their private yeah, parts. Exactly. So just don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right, uh, next one. Uh, you dot lost dot me wants to know, biggest wave ever surfed? Uh, biggest wave I ever caught was probably, what is this? maybe a year ago um, at an outer reef on the North Shore called Himalayas. It was probably like a 
I don't know exactly how big, like 20 to 25 foot wave in between there. Oh. It was my biggest wave I paddled into. And, and you're, you're speaking Hawaiian. Yeah. So yeah, this is Hawaiian. like... This is a big wave. Double that. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, so it was probably one of the most incredible sessions of my life. The waves were incredible. It was like... It was probably some of the biggest, most perfect waves I've ever seen. Wow. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah. I think anything about like head high, I'm cool with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like... During that last well a yeah. month ago, yeah. like that was the biggest wave I've ever surfed. Really? It. Bowls was Where too big. Went? Um, so I went a Waikiki, like oh, yeah. outside Canoes, Queens. But it was bombing. It yeah. was bombing. I was kind of just hanging out in the middle part, you know, three to five. And then, you know, you kind of get dragged out. You have to maybe duck dive some yeah. waves. Um, I had longboard. And then by the time I, I I was out on the outside, these huge walls would come. Yeah. And, you know, it's probably like double overhead, <laughs> which is like not anything crazy to you guys. But seeing those walls come, I'm like, Oh, yeah. this is, but it's exciting because I'm like, I want to try to catch it, but I don't yeah. know how to catch it. Yeah, yeah. Like how to, you know, stand up and but ride it's, it. It's all relative. Like I yeah. tell people, it's all based on your experiences, right? So mm -hmm. since I was so young and I experienced like a four foot wave, that four foot wave when I was 10 years old felt the exact same as that 20 footer mm -hmm. that I just caught just now. So it's just all your experiences as you go through. Yeah. And then each one, you're going to get more comfortable and more comfortable and you know, next thing you know, you catch him in 10 foot wave and it's like, oh, not yeah. that bad. Well, maybe one day I'll, I'll catch <laughs> Actually, I started off and uh, I, I really enjoyed just like the small waves, like, oh, whitewash, whatever. Yep. And then you get better and you're like, hey, this exactly. is so boring. You're like, I want a good face. I want to be able to ride it. Yep. And then you're like, hey, you catch a bigger one. Like during that swell, I, I caught a bigger wave at at bulls and i was like i went so fast and i was like oh this that was so fun that was the funniest <laughs> thing i've ever experienced and then you just want to keep so i can see that yeah. that adrenaline that progressive like rush that you just want that rush because you just want to yeah. you want a bigger wave to ride every yeah, time yeah. it's like oh that felt so good yeah and then you when you get the small little waves you're like mm, yeah eh. it, it's hard to um you know you gotta kind of take a step back and be like okay no this is still fun yeah, i'm really grateful yeah, i yeah. get to surf and that's the hardest yeah. part about <laughs> surfing because you always just want more you yeah know? <laughs> yeah <laughs> the worst is when you're like okay one more and then you like that one wave you catch just doesn't do like, it oh, that's you know? not it's it like, i gotta get like, one more after yeah that. when you're yeah. eating and you just maybe just need something else like a little dessert or something and yeah. you just keep going and going my wife just yeah. posted a tiktok because i told her uh, <laughs> yeah, I saw yeah she was like when my husband says one more wave and i was like on my 10th one <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, one more, hold on, hold on. I just like a couple more. Yeah, we were yeah. supposed to only go swim mm. right before dark, <laughs> but I cannot go to the beach and not bring a board. Yeah, it's yeah, just too yeah, hard. Yeah. On the opposite side of that, the worst is when you're like, okay, I'm just going to catch one more so I can go in and the wave doesn't come. Yeah. Then you get stuck. Yeah. I rule, I yeah. rule in the water uh, when I'm with my friends and we're surfing and stuff. You never say, oh, I'm catch one more and go in because right when you say that, you're going to be stuck out Jinx there for yourself. at least another yeah, half yeah. hour. That has happened to me so So you many just times. wait till you get that wave and go, yeah, yep, I'm done. Okay, I'm going okay. in. Yeah, because you don't want to paddle in. You don't want to No, end. that's, yeah. you cannot paddle in. Yeah. Okay, but what happens when there's no waves that come? No, you got to <laughs> wait. wait. <laughs> you just wait till something comes. You cannot paddle in. That's okay. a full fail <laughs> session right there. Well, see, that happened to me a couple of days ago. I went out to Pillars um, okay. in front of China Walls. And like everywhere was flat, but I just wanted to get in the water. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I saw, I saw a couple of bodyboarders, some kids over there. So I just went and caught maybe two waves. And the rest of the time, I was just sitting for like oh, 45 no. minutes to an hour. And I had that, I was going through that dilemma like, yeah. oh, I need to catch one in. Yeah. I'm a failure if I don't catch <laughs> one in. Like, I just like could not get myself to paddle in. But, yeah. you know, it's already getting dark. And that that's kind of a sketchy place. There's a yeah, channel. Yeah. You, know, and you I'm gotta paddle my, across the yeah, channel. Yeah, thing. And I'm, I'm by myself. Yeah. So I was like, so I ended up having to just paddle it. No waves yeah, came. Yeah, no waves. Yeah. Sometimes that's just how it goes. Yeah, but if you can avoid that, <laughs> avoid yeah. it. All right, couple more. Uh, Cass Kahealani says, how was it growing up at KS Dorms with your parents? His mom was our <laughs> dorm advisor. I know you already <laughs> talked about this, but yeah. I already had it in. So. Uh, the dorms was fun. You know, I got, it was basically like I grew up with a bunch of older brothers and sisters all the time. The boys dorm was right up the road. So mm. I actually would get my skateboard and ride up and down the road all the time and you know, back then they used to let the kids skateboard. So I'd skateboard with all the boarders and mm. we'd bomb hills and stuff. Yeah. So it was actually super fun. And um, I grew up with all all girls and all sisters. So, you know, to have other kids around that I could play with was kind of, was fun. Yeah. Cool experience. I, I didn't know that was a thing, but yeah. yeah, super cool. All right. Last one. Noah Purrington wants to know any controversial topics you wish you could voice to the world. 
I don't know. You don't have to answer that. It's just controversial. Yeah, topics. I thought maybe I'll ask you that. Maybe you, you know, you get something like I like pineapple pizza or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, Which surfer do you hate the most? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, there's no hate to anybody, but I'm competitive as hell. That's controversial. I yeah. mean, I feel like I'm pretty misunderstood in the fact that I'm a dickhead sometimes, and I'm um, just. You know, I might be labeled as, you know, a bad person, but, you know, that's people that only see me in one setting. You know, mm -hmm. if I'm competing and it's me versus you and I'm wanting the same thing that you want, then. Yeah, you're you know, going to take that away from me. Exactly. So I'm not going to let you take that from me. So. Exactly. That's going to bring the yeah. fight out in me. And that's not the prettiest version of myself. But yeah. then if we're at the beach and I'm with my friends and we're having fun, yeah. then. You know, it's it'll be a whole different person. Yeah, I agree. I mean, as a you know athlete, competitor, yeah. play sports all my life. You know, sometimes you're just in the zone, and yeah. you know, you kind of got to put on that mean mug, mm -hmm. and you know, afterwards you shake hands, and yeah, know, and then it's over. And it, I'm, it, it, leave it on the field, leave it in the exactly. The water. And that's how I was yeah. brought up. You know, you just give it everything you yeah. got, and then when it's done, shake hands, and it's over. Yeah, yeah. I, I think with surfing, it's it's a it's same but different. Yeah, where it's, it's different. just it's yeah, like. People will get into fight. You cut somebody off. Yeah, or, and they you know, take them like, to the beach. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's like that. That culture is crazy. Yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm mellow. I just yeah, yeah. I just try Better to say, to how's it, uncle? How's everybody? Yeah, I let yeah. people go. And, yeah, it's all good. Okay. All right. So mahalo for the Instagram questions. Make sure you leave some in the next episode, and maybe your questions will make it on the podcast. All right. So what I want to talk about now is um, how much does culture play a role in your life and um, some a topic that sometimes come comes up is not being Hawaiian enough, mm. you know, where it's like, you know, say you went to a Hawaiian school or you are Hawaiian, but you don't speak the language, you're not in the Lo'i, you're not mm -hmm, doing all these mm -hmm, things mm -hmm. that people think, you know, are supposed to be Hawaiian. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever struggle with that? <clears throat> um, yeah, a little bit. Um, recently, I've been thinking like, ah, like more bum with myself, like, because I cannot do those things. I want mm -hmm. to, you mm -hmm. know, but I just... I feel like it's fairly new, this resurgence of like practicing Hawaiian culture, you know, like it's awesome. I love it. But at the same time, it's, it's new. Like when I was growing up, it wasn't as accessible as it is now, you know, like I feel like now you can call people up and go work in the lot if you want. Mm -hmm. Back then there wasn't really those things happening and yeah. people weren't like, uh, you know, oleloing to each other, like in the open, you know, like as much so mm -hmm. i feel like those things just weren't the same when i was growing up when i was younger mm -hmm. which would really kind of that would really you know groom you to mm -hmm. to what you like and what you see and what you're inspired by you know what i mean mm -hmm. and for me it was all surfing so yeah. if you ask me um if hawaiian culture played a lot in what i did i just i would still say yeah because i'm mm -hmm. still surfing you know mm -hmm. this is a part of my culture this is yeah. who i am I'm not trying to be something I'm not. This yeah. is just naturally who I am. But, you know, I you probably not going to catch me in the lot that much. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and um, um, you know, I, I can't f fluently speak Hawaiian, but, you know, I would love to do those things. Anytime I get the opportunity, you know, I definitely take that opportunity because, mm -hmm. you know, it reminds me, you know, why surfing to me is so special. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all a part of this my whole culture is I'm, you know, I feel like when I do those things, I get grounded. Yeah. But, um, I actually made a push to try and kind of push myself to do something like that. Uh, a couple of years ago, I had a Makahiki event mm -hmm. at uh, Turtle Bay. Oh, right on. Um, I just wanted to have an event that kind of complemented surfing and kind of show the rest of the surfing world that comes over here to mm -hmm. compete and do these competitions on the North shore, mm -hmm. these surfing competitions. Why this, this time of year is so mm. significant for us and significant for surfing. Yeah. It was Makahiki season, and this is what we do in Makahiki season. So mm -hmm. um, we did that one year, but I am not a events coordinator, <laughs> so to speak. So I think that, that was a little overwhelming <laughs> for me. And yeah. I went on tour after that year, and I was just like, oh, I was just burnt out by the time I came home. But yeah. that's definitely something i want to you know circle back to yeah let us know if you it's just you super fun and i love events. playing yeah. all those games and yeah. i feel like it's important for a lot of people that come here and surf to understand you know to truly understand where surfing came from mm -hmm. 
you know, having a Makahiki event would be, you know, beneficial for them. Yeah, that's super cool. Awesome answer. I, I love how you said it's still new. That's yeah. just something that I've, I don't know if I talked about it on the podcast or just with some people on the, off the podcast, but yeah, the, the resurgence, the renaissance of like Hawaiian culture is still so new in the seventies. That's when yeah. it was reinstated as an official language, mm-hmm. you know, Hawaiian immersion preschools only came around like the eighties and, you know, got big mm-hmm. in the nineties, 2000. That's less, that's about 50 years only. Yeah. So we're still trying to figure out where we fit in this Hawaiian culture, this modern era of yeah. Hawaii. And, um, like you said, like, you probably won't, I won't, we probably won't find you in the Yeah. but, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. I think people got to realize like we all have our different roles mm-hmm. as Hawaiians and it's like you, you don't have all your warriors all in one place. Yeah. You know, you have some, you know, farming, you have mm-hmm. some in the water fishing. Yeah. Maybe you have the warriors surfing, you yeah. know, maybe you have people like me doing media stuff, mm-hmm. podcasting. But we're, we're all playing this vital role and contributing to the whole Hawaiian ecosystem, yeah. you know? And I, 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 I think that's, you know, something that we have to kind of be easier on ourselves with realizing yeah, like, for sure. you know, I'm doing this. I don't need to, you know, try to do all these other things just to be Hawaiian, yeah. just so I could feel like I'm Hawaiian, exactly. you know, because like you said it's, it, you, it wouldn't feel right. Yeah. You yeah. don't want to do something or be someone you're not. Yeah. You know, you know, surfing, mm-hmm. you excel at surfing, mm-hmm. just keep doing surfing, yeah. you know, represent us in the water for sure, and we'll for take sure. care of the lawyer, you know, yeah, yeah. we'll take care of the podcast. We'll mm-hmm. take care of these other parts, mm-hmm. but we're all working together yeah. as a whole. You know, it's a kako thing mm-hmm. and perpetuating the culture. So yeah, I, I loved, I loved how you answered that. And yeah, another, just a message to people listening, just like, I don't think you should, there should ever be a time where you're like, I'm not Hawaiian enough. You yeah. Know? And I think it's just, like you said, it's not, it's not being so hard on yourself. I yeah. Mean, well, seeing other people do. Yeah. Something. And just understand yeah. it's not too late. You can still do them now. Yeah. It's, yeah. you know, yeah. Um, it's never too late to learn something. And, you know, I feel like the more you learn, the better you become as a person, especially new things like, mm-hmm. You know, it's so good to have that beginner's mindset. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the best part about, you know, yeah. picking up a new hobby is being a beginner at it. Because yeah. then once you're good at it, like, you got to figure out ways to to still have that mindset and still keep going. So mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, it's never too late to learn stuff. And you just got to be, you know, have have an open mentality to everything. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, just keep going, just keep going. Yeah, yeah, we all we all love that, like the beginning of something. Yeah. It's, it's like it's in a relationship, part. the chase, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, we all were were addicted to that feeling, mm-hmm. like it's something new, and you just wanna, and you want more of it. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of the chase, how did you uh, meet your wife? Yeah. Uh, actually, so I knew Jenna when we were really young. So mm-hmm. we used to catch a ride to the beach with uh, one of our friends. Um. And we met up one day when she was in the car and our friend came, picked us up and took us to, you know, Kiwalo Basin, mm-hmm. our home break. How old were you? And I was 15 and she was 12 oh, at okay. the time. Okay. So we were just friends, you know, we grew up in the same surfing circle and we surfed together and we were just like, you know, kind of just homies, you know, yeah. we were just friends. You was right about to grow out your, your luscious I was locks, still yeah. bald. <laughs> I was still oh, bald oh, ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's true love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there was no affection there, nothing yet. And then... Um, then our friend, our surfing friend group kind of broke up because everyone starts getting older. People start going different high schools. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, things start splitting up and then I never see her for a while. And I think it was like, uh, my senior year, I come out, I seen her at like a high school party. Mm. Um, and he was like, and oh, how's her, that baby girl? <laughs> yeah. And then I seen her in a different light. I was like, actually, I was like, what the heck are you doing over here? You know? Um, but then after that, we kind of rekindled our friendship and we were talking a lot and kind of hanging out. And then it kind of just, you know, sparked into something more intimate. But uh, we're, we've been friends since we were real, real young. And oh, that's cool. she's someone that's understood me and understood where I came from. And and uh, uh, she also surfs. And for she's me, a pre- she's a pretty good surfer too. Yeah, I saw she, some of the for vlogs. me, that's, that's huge, you know, because I love surfing. You know, surfing is a huge part of who I am and, you know, everything I do in a day. So, if I was dating or married to someone that mm-hmm. didn't really understand that, I feel like it'd be pretty hard. Yeah. Because there's one thing with doing something you love together. Yeah. But also being able to understand 
So and unless you know you do that, mm -hmm. you know you you can't really understand. You know, yeah, it's like exactly like if I'm talking about the Peace Corps, I was in Peace Corps Madagascar. Okay. I'm telling you about you know how crazy it was to live, you know, with no running water yeah, and all yeah. of that, and travel and like sit like this for thirty hours traveling someplace with yeah. goose and a kid throwing up next to you and all of that, <laughs> and like you, you hear it and you're like, oh wow, that sucks, or yeah. you know, you kind of <laughs> you kind of you 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 maybe sympathize. But you 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 just you don't really understand. You don't know how it feels exactly. like being unless. So like if I was with another Peace Corps volunteer, we can talk like, oh yeah, how was that Bruce ride and blah blah blah. And it's like yeah. yeah, we we totally get it. So the same thing with you. It's like you guys just get each other because you you connect in the ocean. You yeah. you know kind of knew each other for a mm -hmm. while. So you you understand each other on a different level that not a lot of people could get. Or if you were ended up with somebody who not surfing, there's just. They, they won't understand that aspect of it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And there's a lot of things with surfing the career as as well that's mm. just hard to understand. Traveling. Like why you have to be gone yeah. for f yeah. <laughs> four months, you know? <laughs> and just like why I put so much into it because, you know, like you said, the surf, the feeling when you get surfing is like, like and not like anything else. So mm. the fact that she understands that we can share that bond yeah. together as well. Like we go surfing together all the time. Like, and that's totally different surfing for me than when I'm like surfing to practice and mm. get better. Yeah. Um, for me, when I go surfing with her, it's like we're playing, you know, yeah, it's just like yeah. when we were little kids and we go surf. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. yeah that feeling of surfing. It's like, it's like taking a sip of white cocoa. <laughs> it's the greatest feeling ever. Yeah. Mm. Not an ad. Nah. All right. So. What's next for you? What you have any big plans? I mean, obviously you want to get back on the tour, mm -hmm. but you know, do you have any? You ever thought about life after surfing? I mean, I'm sure you're gonna surf. You're gonna be one of those yeah. uncles in the water, yeah. you know, surfing. But you know, yeah, so. I don't know. I feel like uh, I've been having those thoughts a lot lately. You know, especially mm -hmm. after you know being on and off tour a few mm -hmm. times. So you know, I've been thinking a lot about what I want to do. I'm not too sure. You know, what my life is gonna look like after surfing but i definitely want to you know get involved with the community in some way mm -hmm. and giving back in some way shape or form and you know the things that i've experienced um i'll definitely like to give back to the you know the amateur surfing world in hawaii um i feel like it's struggling a lot right now um when i was young doing a lot of amateur surfing events and and you know as a young surfer still in high school and stuff wanting to compete i actually had a lot of opportunities to go and do that where i look at it now and i don't hear of much events going on i feel like i hear it's struggling and there's just not as much opportunity for kids which is sad because that's going to determine or deter kids to go somewhere else and do something else you know and i want more young surfers to come out of hawaii mm -hmm. so i think my path will probably lead me towards doing something like that in the future um, but for right now, yeah, I'm just trying to get back on tour, trying to better myself and, um, still figure that out. You know, I'm still trying to figure out exactly who I am and who I want to be after serving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that's kind of like your career goals. What about like personal goals, like starting a family, yeah. you know, you, you're already a homeowner, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. I see, uh, you got a lot of surfboard babies. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I definitely want to start my own family. You know, that's why, you know, I bought the house. Uh, we were able to buy our house in 2019, right before the pandemic oh, nice. hit. Good so timing. it was a blessing. That was yeah. super lucky. Um, and my wife's actually in real estate, so she's really, you know, versed in that area of our life. Um, but, uh, you know, personal goals for me is just to be able to come back home to Hawaii and just raise my family and enjoy my wife and my kids and you know grow old with my parents and my sisters and you know i love hawaii more than anything um it's the reason why i live and do what i do um so definitely personally i would just want to sit back and enjoy being in hawaii and i've traveled everywhere in the world and still my favorite place is hawaii yeah. so have you been to Madagascar yet? I haven't. You gotta go okay, there. They maybe. call it the last frontier. Okay, okay. There's some pretty good waves there. No way. Yeah. I gotta go visit. There's no that's, crowd. There's that's no crowd. Someplace I still gotta you go. You need a tour guy, let me know. All right. You can speak the local language. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. So, you know, once you know you've you've done everything that you 
wanted to do or you know you you accomplish all these things like how do you want to be remembered as you know Ezekiel Lau uh, that's a good question how I want to be remembered <sighs> on hammer <laughs> <laughs> No, I just I want to be remembered as someone who is proud of where he, uh, proud of being from Hawaii, proud of being Hawaiian, really proud of his culture and his people, and someone who represented his people really well. And um, I don't only want to be rep, uh, remembered as a surfer. You know, I just want to be remembered as, you know, a good family man and um, someone that just worked hard and you know chased his dreams and accomplished his goals and you know, just represented Hawaii the best he could. Mm -hmm. I think you're on your way, and I yeah. think you're already doing a good job. So, yeah, the whole Oma will just continue. Yeah, okay. Uh, these questions I like to ask to all my guests. Okay. What is one thing you wish people knew about you that they don't? One thing people wish they knew about me. I feel like I, like, just answered a question like this. Um, what would they... Like you, you love rom-coms or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I don't know why I can't think of anything right now. You love watching The Bachelor. I don't. I hate watching reality <laughs> shows. It I'm, makes I'm me cringe saying. and it makes me feel like, oh, I hope I never look like that on the show. I'll never be on a reality <laughs> show. <laughs> um, I think people should know that I'm horrible. My small motor skills are horrible. That I cannot play the ukulele and that bums me out. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Uh. I struggle so much because my fingers, I just like, my fingers start cramping yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. So like I just like instruments. You just yeah, can't do. it's just those small motor skills. What about are, like um like catching a football or like yeah, all that stuff is really? is easy. I can do all that. But it's like the when you but get like a little real small, nitty like, gritty, like moving your finger like this small mm -hmm. area, and like mm -hmm. even like picking little stuff out like is crazy. <laughs> I have such hard time. Okay, interesting. I never heard that one. <laughs> that, that's uh, the first time I ever heard that. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so um, what is one life hack that you have that you, you can share with the, the audience? Life hack is a uh, sauna and ice bath. Sauna and ice bath? Yeah. Do you have a sauna? At I house? have a sauna at my house. I've been hearing a lot of good things about sauna. And like Joe Rogan bath. always talks yeah. about it. I feel like that life hack is huge in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I like the sauna and ice because it kind of hits both areas where it, like it's mm. super hot and you kind of you know you perspire and you got to handle the heat and it's good for your body and your muscle tissues and whatever and then you get in the ice and then you're just battling your mind you know your mental state and when you get out you just feel so refreshed and energized like when i get out of an ice bath it feels like i just drank a full cup of coffee <laughs> like i'm ready to go i'm all talkative like yeah. um and i think it's just really refreshing for your body and it's like a reset button yeah, yeah, I I get it. It's like jumping in a river and he yeah. you grow up in waterfalls and the, the water's cold. But and you, you feel so good. Oh, you yeah. get out of that. It, you're like your feel body's brand steaming. New. You feel yeah. so good. And Different. it's kind of the same. Like when, mm -hmm. like when I have a hard day and like I'm doing a bunch of stuff that I don't want to do or something, and I don't have time to surf. But you know, I have like five minutes before it gets dark. I'll run to the beach and just jump in the water real fast. Mm. It's like kind of the same type of deal. You can yeah, jump yeah. in the ice bath and just feel super re-energize yeah. good you know, for your mental health yeah recharge well. right on that's awesome all right what are some of your favorite local businesses to support local businesses to support i mean i'll support all of them you know <laughs> um you got some friends you want to shout out yeah uh kikoa casamero uh, yeah. ava i really yeah. love what they're doing you know they're doing a lot with the community we just got done with uh he kicked off World Oceans Month uh, with a week of just uh, sustainable coastline, you know, just learning. He They did a really good job at teaching more so why we got to protect the beaches and what it does and what the consequences are for us not protecting these beaches and these coastlines and, you know, what that does to the marine life and all those things. And for us as surfers, like, that's huge. We, we got to protect our playground. This is, you know, my livelihood relies on this, but just, you know, my well-being and my health relies on this because I love these places and, you know, these places give so much to me. So mm -hmm. got to give back. Yeah. 
it's like the land and see take care of it and it'll take care of you exactly yeah love it okay um what what are some of your favorite places to eat at favorite places to eat are you, at? Are you a foodie are yes you in, you i like eat way okay. too much that's a problem <laughs> what's your favorite food shoot it's hard to tell i go through phases mm. but right now it's like asian food like we've been eating a lot of korean barbecue oh, okay right <laughs> asian food is my top hawaiian and asian food yeah hawaiian and asian food and we just yeah. had hawaiian food uh with my family the other night oh, right we just on. everyone just bring la la and stuff um uh, but my favorite right now i don't know what it is is gomate oh I love gomate. every time i come back home like from a trip or something, I just like, I get gomate on the way home from the airport and I just relax for the rest of the day. The ramen or the chinkatsu the curry ramen. or what are we talking about? I get about? the, um, the wonton, tantan ramen. Wonton, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it's so mean. good. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Gomate. Love that. <laughs> Love that. All right. So we're coming to the end of the podcast and I'm, I'm just curious, um, if you have any other hobbies, like what, what do you do in your when you're not surfing like what is there your day-to-day life mm-hmm. um well i like boxing right now oh yeah i've been yeah. really into boxing i got Benito, into boxing right? a lot uh during covid yeah uh, a lot of the gyms that uh i usually go to were all closed during covid so you know nito was coming to our, our friend's house and training us uh you know privately and it was it was awesome and i got really into it it's something that was super fun and new mm-hmm. to me and i like like I said, I like that beginner's mindset. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes surfing for me, when I do it every day, it, it kind of gets gets a little stale because mm-hmm. it's so um, so repetitive for me. I'm doing it so much. So for me to go out and box and put my concentration and everything into something so different, it almost, like, re-energizes me and makes me more inspired to go back and surf. Yeah. So I've been boxing a lot uh, whenever I'm home. Um, at Needle Boxing, shout out Needle yeah, Boxing. Yeah, he actually said when he was on the podcast, yeah. he mentioned you. He said oh, you, really? you got some heavy hands. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, he said that. Oh shoot, he's yeah. probably being nice, but <laughs> um, yeah, we love Needle. Needle's like actually yeah. one of our uh, good family Hustler. friends. Yeah, yeah. And we've been, right. we actually got pretty close during the last few years, and he was actually at our wedding. Nice that we had in January this year. Um, yeah, stoked yeah. off to see all the things he's doing yeah he's just blowing up you know mm-hmm. just all the stuff and all the opportunities coming his way that's kind of just a testament to who he is you know he's mm-hmm. so positive and just outgoing and inspiring like you watch him you get motivated you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. so i like that energy i like being around him and mm-hmm. he's just a fun cool guy to be around yeah you probably like boxing too because you don't gotta use your fingers yeah yeah They're exactly off, right? all close. <laughs> you just only go. my arms i don't need to worry you tie my fingers <laughs> up and i'm good yeah so you like the boxing glove not the usc <laughs> yeah yeah the usc too out, much yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, that's classic <laughs> yeah shout out shout out to nita go check out his episode on the holy verse podcast yeah. we had him. check him out yeah okay um I'm wondering uh, when you surf and you, you know you're going through these high pressure situ- situations. How do you get past the nerves? Do you ever get nervous? Yeah, I'm nervous a lot. Yeah, are you <laughs> nervous more? right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not nervous right now. But more of the nerves come from a lot of expectation. You know, expectation mm. you put on yourself, expectation people feel, yeah, or you feel that people have of you, um, and then just you know the surfing. There's so much unknown. I can prepare for every single thing that I think is going to happen. And I can be preparing for weeks for, you know, this one or a couple of days. And I literally don't know what's going to happen. I don't know when they're going to run the contest. I don't know how the waves are going to be like. I don't know who I'm competing against mm-hmm. until I get there. So a lot of that makes me nervous. But day of competing, um, to calm my nerves, I really just try and think about all the times I prepared and all the things that make me feel good, like surfing at home, trying to find things that make me feel comfortable. Like, oh, this place is just like, you know, this is this place is kind of like Makapu. So mm-hmm. just kind of like, you know, feel like that. I remember surfing, you know, at Mox and all my tr- all my trainings that I was doing over there and, you know, trying, you know, get it. You know, you can trick your mind almost to f- feel like you're somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So um, I kind of just close my eyes and just like give myself like a couple minutes to just really put myself back like mm-hmm. in my comfort zone and feel good and mm-hmm. give myself warm feelings and you know then when i paddle out in the water then it's kind of just disappears and it goes okay you know i'm still just surfing mm. it's just like i'm at home so yeah. you just go out here and just surf and have fun. remember why you do it yeah 
when when you're uh, competing and you're just like you do, do you ever feel like you kind of su- succumb to those nerves or is that why you didn't like perform as good mm-hmm. or because i mean you have all the skills you have yeah. everything you need to be a world champ mm-hmm. right so sometimes it just doesn't you know come together is that more in your mind is that yeah. like, has does that have a lot to do with the ocean, the conditions, a mix of both? Um, for me, I think it's all mental. Mm. It's just the, the how I'm thinking in that point in time. You know, a lot of times I feel like when I do have those times where, how come that never work? You know, what, what, what the hell? I was ready, you know, like mm-hmm. everything was prepared. The ways were good. You know, what happened? And it's more so just, you know, the way I'm thinking about it, the way I'm approaching it. Um, a lot of times I feel like I get into my own head and I start competing with the mm-hmm. other guy. Surfing is one of those things where I feel like if you're competing with the other guy too much, it really brings you out of your element. Mm-hmm. Like you're trying too hard maybe? You're trying too hard and, and you're kind of like, um, it's hard to say, like I don't know what the word would be, but it's like you're smothering it, mm-hmm. you know? You're kind of like, oh, I don't want this to happen. Or I don't want that to happen. Mm-hmm. So you're kind of on the defense. Yeah, kind of overthinking it yeah. sometimes. And I found the best times I've competed the best is when I'm on the offense and I'm focused more, mm-hmm. not on the other guy, but I'm more focused on the ocean. What mm-hmm. is the ocean doing? What is the ocean telling me? You know, um, how should I be surfing? You know, focus more on the surfing aspect and my my rhythm with the ocean mm-hmm. versus like me competing with the other guy. Mm-hmm. So... So what was the most challenging part of your career? You um, the most challenging part of my career? It's hard to say, but I feel like right now mm. I'm going through one of the most challenging parts of my career, being that I'm getting older um, and not really seeing the results I want to see, but also having to take a step back and tell myself to stop focusing on the result. Mm. You know, that's not, that's not why we're doing it. You know, we got to focus on the journey. You know, the journey yeah. is your destination. This is why we do it. We got to love every yeah. step of the process and, yeah. and, you know, take a step back and realize why I'm doing it. And for me, the best times, the best things that have happened have been when I am not trying to specifically get somewhere. Like last year when I was requalifying for the tour, I didn't care if I requalified or not, but I was just so excited to go back and compete. Mm. So I realized like, I really love this. I haven't done this in so long. Like I'm super excited. Mm. And then when I got on tour this year, I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I made all these goals. Like I'm going to work my ass off and I'm going to get there. And then that kind of brought me out of my element where, you know, I was smothering it and wanted mm. it too much. So, so you, you get, you overcome it by kind of, going back it's like taking a yeah. couple steps back to move mm-hmm. forward exactly that's what it sounds like yeah mm. so you gotta kind of, or just take a step back to give more perspective mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. you know you still gotta have the drive and the determination but i feel like for me that's not gonna go away i naturally have that you know i wake up naturally and i want to just you know put the work in and do it yeah. but sometimes you know you gotta work smarter not harder yeah you know sometimes you just gotta take a step back and go maybe the work doesn't have to be done on the outside physically. Maybe the work has to be done on the inside, you know, my mm-hmm. mentals. So Yeah. Yeah. Great great point. Love that. Well yeah, mahalo for sharing all of that yeah. and you know, sharing your story. It, um, mm-hmm. you know, I'm a fan. I'm gonna be cheering for you and every all the athletes in Hawaii, you yeah. know. But especially for the ultimate surfer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you. No, thank <laughs> you for having me. I'm stoked. Yeah, stoked yeah. To be here. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, do you have anything else you'd like to share with the listeners? Um if you guys paddle out in the ocean, just have fun and, you know, smile. In Tahiti, uh, I think we can learn, everyone in Hawaii can learn a little bit from Tahiti. Um, and I think we should start doing this is every time you paddle out to a lineup, just go out and shake everybody's hand. I think if everyone did that, it would really calm the nerves and a little bit of the uh, tension in the lineup to where uh, everyone realizes like we're all friends, we're all having fun and we all just want to catch a couple waves. Yeah, I like that. I, how do you think that will work in town with all the people? Like saying hi to every single one of them. Going to have more time for people to <laughs> catch waves because everybody's shaking hands. <laughs> Life hack right yeah. there. <laughs> okay. Uh, I would say, yeah, I always, I, this is just me. It might just be a more biased thing. I, 
I always, if I go out and I don't know people, I just say hi to like the most local looking guys, yeah, yeah. the uncles, like, you know, somebody who like looks fine. I'm, I'm like, I don't want to yeah. get on their bad side. No, yeah, but in Tahiti, they do that. Like I, I was tripping out. I was in the lineup one day and all the local, like the Tahitian boys came and they all came. And before any of them caught a wave or even looked at a wave, they paddled up to every person. And they shook their hand. They're like, oh, how's it, how's it, how's it, how's it? And then boom, they sit in the lineup. Wow. And it kind of set the tone like, oh, okay, like really eases the tension and kind of like gives a good mm -hmm. vibe in the lineup. I feel like if people did that in town, be so much more relaxed yeah. and people would want to share waves, you know, because then yeah. you realize like you've already like um, engaged with those other people in the lineup. I feel like people paddle out and they kind of ignore people because mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I'm yeah, just catch yeah. my waves and get out of here. It is it is a little awkward when you go out and you're kind of just yeah. sitting next to people and you're not saying anything. No one anything. says nothing. You kind yeah, of like, oh, like, God, I don't, I don't know. want that way. <laughs> Am but I then, okay to be here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then once you have that first interaction, yeah. it's like it kind of breaks the up. ice and you're like, you know, they're like, oh, no, you go for the wave. Or, you know, you just kind of have that, exactly. that bond. So, yeah, I, that's a good that's a good thing. Maybe I'll start start by doing that. Yeah. At least just join up the shock. Yeah, or just something. be like, oh, how's it, how's it, everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Catch how's up everybody? This is my wave. Yeah. No, no one else go. <laughs> if you go. <laughs> or people are going to start doing them like, oh, what's up, bada boom. And then they just yeah, start yeah. going on waves. You just check over. Yeah. yeah, there's a wave coming. Like, hey, hey, what's up, man? Huh? <laughs> so you shake the hand and you just go out their wave. Yeah. <laughs> smart, smart. <clears throat> That's uh, Imua grads right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, where can we find you? What's your socials? Uh, you can find me Zeke Lau on Instagram and TikTok and um, Zeke Lau Unleashed or just Zeke Lau on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, those are my handles right now. Everything's Zeke Lau. Okay. Um, coming out with a new vlog uh, this Friday. You guys can check it out. Mm -hmm. It's going to drop. Oh, actually tomorrow. Oh, okay. So stay tuned. It'll be. I'll post the trailers and everything on my channel yeah. on um instagram and tiktok and it'll be up on youtube by 11 o'clock tomorrow all right uh, go check it out I, I checked out some of the episodes uh you matt matt kuji yep. he does your uh my video guy yeah. matt kuji yeah, he yeah. traveled with me to australia and super most of the stops yeah videographer super local boy too yeah. he went kumea mm -hmm. he grad 2011 okay or 2010 yeah, same as me. yeah right on okay well go check that out and you know good luck with your career with your life yeah Gonna be rooting for you. Right on. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah, Appreciate mahalo it. Zeke for joining us on the Hawaii Verse podcast. Check us out on HawaiiVerse.com, the best place to support local. Spread aloha, be kind to one another, and mahalo for listening to us today. New episodes every Thursday, so make sure you follow us and leave a review. I'm your host, Kamaka, and you'll hear me next time on the Hawaii Verse podcast. Ahui ho.